into the final match of the evening. Grand Finals between John Numbers versus Sinji. And it is worth reminding folks at home that this is a best of three. So if Sinji wants to run away with this, he just needs to take those two games. Yeah, but first to two, man. We'll see what happens. And, and remember that John Numbers has to win two sets. So if John Numbers yes. wins two games, he then has to win another two games to take home the entire tournament because Sinji has yet to lose a set this entire tournament. So he, he gets that little advantage because of that. Yo, this song's a jam. I was just about to say, this what is, is this? This is a bonus song in classic mode, and you're running away from the darkness. John is a huge fan of this song, and I am too. It is a banger, dog. <laughs> Okada with the roller. Again, yeah. when, whenever you get set up like that by John, like, when you just get uh, sent at that slight angle, it's actually better not to tech. Because if you're laying down on the ground and get hit by the roller, you don't get grounded. So you just get hit by the roller, and it only does like 10 damage or something. And so, for those of you wondering why grounding is such a useful tool, it is worth reminding you that there has actually been a change to how grounding works. From previous iterations of Smash, grounding has only been getting better and better as far as the knockback reduction. Uh, when it was introduced in Brawl, it was a severe uh, limitation to where you're getting knocked back. And then they decreased that limitation in Smash 4, where it was about 50% knockback. In this game, there doesn't seem to be a reduction. You just take all that knockback, you get sent wherever you need to go. Yeah. And Inkling is a fine force for showcasing what you can do when you are able to ground someone so easily. Okay, Numbers barely avoiding that bell. That would have been his death if he got caught by that. At this point, Pac-Man, Sinji's looking for a bell conversion, and John Numbers is looking for a splat roller conversion. So they're both looking for their kill, it confirms. Because both at that prime percent, he just caught him! Jumping up there with the up air and a Tanta boost. Yeah, unlike uh, Pac-Man, Inkling does have a uh, kill aerial that you can very easily throw out. Up air is a phenomenal move, whereas Sinji's got to put in a bit more work in order to end out his uh, opponents. The key is going to be doing it for him. We're Caught back him. to square one. Caught him air dodging into the stage. Okay, numbers is coming back, throwing out that splat bomb against the hydrant. Curious how the splat bomb sends the Inkling, the uh, hydrant the opposite way. It's trying. I think what happens is if you get hit by the splat bomb, I think it wants to bring you into the inkling so that you can get combos off of it. I think that, I think that's the intended purpose of it. Yeah. Sometimes it sends the way that it's facing. Other times not. I think it's just based on like the hitbox. It might be how long you cook the splat bomb too. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that develops because I have a feeling that like when you know where your opponent's going afterwards, sending the, out the splat bomb to send someone back to you, leading into something else, is gonna look amazing. Okay, now Sinji's got that key ready to go. It's gonna be a fast throw. Tries to throw it against the Hydrant as well to create two obstacles for numbers to dance around. Okay, painting the ink a bit, throwing the splat bomb the wrong way. Key plus Hydrant taking on a hefty amount of damage against John. Key oh, go. fell into Blinky up smash. Sinji one stock away, take away this game. And you know, as we discussed, it will be our first champion for Ultimate, so. Let's see who does manage to get the crown out of this. That, da that dash tag is pretty safe on shield, to be honest. There's actually four hits instead of three for the previous game. So you gotta hold it for one additional hit than normal. Okay, the bell is ready to go. Oh, he's gonna opt to go for the key instead. Throw it against the hydrant. Yeah, I think Sinji's realized that the combination of hydrant and key just put out a, a fast enough series of hitboxes that it lets Sinji reset where his traps are going to be. Yeah, I mean, he did that in Smash 4, too. Like, uh, he, a lot of the stuff that Sinji's doing, he's been inheriting for the past four years of gameplay, you know? Ooh, a pair through the hydrant and Pac-Man. Good stuff. Okay, trying to up smash the hydrant just to get out of the out of the way. I like it. Good pressure from Sinji. Didn't follow up with the third swing of the jab combo. Opting to just go with a retreating forward air instead just to safely get away from harm's path. Okay, rapid jab. He goes off super deep for that forward air because Inkling can afford to do that. She can go off super deep and then go for the super jump afterwards and get back to the stage safe and sound. But John is already sitting at 63 damage. Looking pretty bleak here. Oh, there we go. All right. Splat bomb onto the Hydrant. The Hydrant itself, I think, is what killed Sinji. Some combination thereof, but either way, we're coming down to the last stocks. And even though Numbers is at a pretty high percentage, all things considered, I think if he keeps up his base for constantly zone breaking, preventing Sinji the space that he needs in order to get through, I think he might actually be able to take this one out, but he's going to have to be a bit more careful with his approaches. I think he's taking a bit too much damage as he moves in. Okay, Numbers. 
Looking for that up smash. Gets the parry because he saw the hydrant coming. Still got caught by the active hitbox, though. Forward to stuff it out. Use his jump. Good punish from John, recognizing it with the grab. The roller right. not going to be able to get a kill off that, but a lot of damage instead. He is starting to control this stage. All the momentum is in John's Ooh. favor. Pushes him off. He has to go for the pack jump to get back. He is done for. Great aggression coming out from John Numbers. That was an amazing last stock played by John. And for those of you who are you know, more well known to seeing his more patient play that he was known for in Smash 4, this is something completely different. A new breed of John that honestly I'm hoping we get to see a lot more of. He saw an opening and he took it all the way. Pushed him completely to the edge of the blast zone, forcing Sinji to like lose his double jump and then have to respond with just his up B from that far away. So game two, John Numbers up one to zero. One game away from resetting the bracket. Will we see it today? John Numbers did end up getting second place at the gauntlet number one last night. The Deadly Alliance ended up hosting a next level. So let's see if he'll get second place again or if he's gonna turn the tides against Sinji's Pac-Man. Oh, they switched the music to Meta Crystal. This is actually one of my favorite Smash tracks. Yeah, this is when you fight Metal Mario in uh, Smash 64 yep. in the classic mode. I love 64. There's actually a lot of aspects of Ultimate that remind me more of 64 than other iterations. Some of the sound effects, like, I know 64 has very iconic sound effects, but I remember, like, in the beta build at E3, they sounded very similar. Or, like, like or they made me think of them anyway. So, like, they're definitely playing homage to, like, all the Smash games, like, offering music from all five games. All right, here we go. Sinji's setting up the Hydrant as per usual. Again, the matchup's going to be centered kind of around that Hydrant. Who can get control of it first? Forward air catches the roll. You cannot roll against Inkling. That is just begging to get burrowed. Like, finding yourself in the ground is such a terrible thing to do against Inkling, but Inklings can hunt for it so easily, especially if you keep your pressure game up like John is doing. Catches the land again, forward smash. I feel like O smash might have been, been a better option. But regardless, catches Yo! the. I mean, there's nothing that Sinji could have done. He just he caught him completely. He had to go at that exact angle to yeah. even attempt to grab the ledge. So Numbers just planted a splat bomb, awaiting him. Like, Numbers is playing phenomenally right now. He's doing a great job of just catching where Sinji wants to move, preventing that measure, or just being right in his face. And now he's got the key on board. Yeah, I think he just tried to go for the air dodge just to like avoid it, but he ended up catching it in the process. Uses the splat bomb to force Sinji to go back onto the stage. Oh, accidental air dodge. Thankfully, he saved his double jump so he can get back to the stage safe and sound with that super jump. His up beam. You saw that splat roller come out. That was a good option from Sinji. Going for the neutral air out of shield to just stuff out that option. Good night. Oh, okay. Gets the bell. He was stunned there for a hot minute. Easy. Easy pickings for Inking. Easy Inkly. Inking. Inky. What's his name? Inky versus Inkling? Like, <laughs> that's what's going on here. I'm pretty sure that I won't say Inky. Maybe? Call me out if I'm wrong. Like, I I, I think it's Inky. Eh, Google can help. It's, it's one of those. It's definitely not Clyde. Clyde's orange. Clyde's the orange one. Yeah. And Pinky's pink. Blinky's blue, I think. Wait, no. I think Blinky's red. Blinky's red and Inky is blue. Shut up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Since he's gonna watch this back, and he's gonna be like double he's gonna disappointed. Be so mad, yeah. He's like, Austin's distracted, and he doesn't know my ghosts. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. Yeah, ninety-six percent on Sinji. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to go on a, a rant there. All right, throwing down that hydrant. John's still playing nice. He's still throwing a lot of bombs. It seems like side B travels a little bit further, or at least is more like. It's going to snap to the ledge easier. I don't know. I think Sinji's aim is just really good with it because he keeps on coming to the ledge with it. And we've only seen John have one effective punish on it once. You know, we actually haven't seen Sinji throw out the melon too often. I mean, it moves really slow this time around. Yeah, given Very how strange. everyone moves a bit faster in this game, and Inkling themselves is also a very quick character, I feel like melon's not that strong right now. Give Sinji time to figure out some use for it. I'm sure he'll figure out like when's the right time to melon. The yeah, opening over the back throw. Back throw is the stronger kill throw, but he was on the other side of the stage. Spot bomb not able to get that kill just yet. Sitting at 190%, just goes off, kicks the power pellet, kicks the Pac-Man, and he is gone. John Numbers right now is on route to bring us into true finals very quickly tonight, but 
Sinji still got some gas in the tank, very quickly yeah. managing to equalize the stocks. Trying to get that fuel going, Deal. We are going into another universe right now from that background noise. Numbers took a lot of damage there off stage. Got the key ready to go. Gonna have to respect it. Jumps over the hydrant this time around. Let's go, John. I just realized one thing that Sinji had done when he side beat into his hydrant. After <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> we saw John do that before. But he actually hit the hydrant away. Yeah, he, he burrowed Sinji from behind the hydrant with the splat roller. That's Again, hilarious. And that splat bomb out. Now Sinji is a completely different color at this point. Good stage spike coming at him. 159%. He is dead. And that should Good be, yeah. night. Bracket reset. Coming from your boy John. It didn't take too long, too. John, I think, is starting to get a feel for playing aggro now, and it's kind of dangerous. He's definitely learned the matchup because, like, that was a completely different uh, play style than we saw in the previous set over in Winners Finals. John is adapting to the new Pac-Man. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to get in your face, not allow you to plan anything. We're going to go back to the stage striking process this time around. It looks like Pokemon Stadium 2 is where we ended up this time. Because we saw a Final Destination for both Game 1 and Game 2 that set. Yo, FD Garden of Hope? Environmental noises? John was one of the people I told to do that, so. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked. It is part of the plan to see. And I want to hear my favorite jam, you know, environmental noises the, in Grand Finals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. You just hear like those, uh, oh, you're really good at that. <laughs> All right, here we go, Smashville. Yeah, a little change of pace here for uh, the stage striking. Ended up taking us here with that middle platform. Just let it go into place really quick, and you're solid. Look how, look how Sinji took advantage of that yeah. platform, moving it from the opposite side. It's like, I have moving platform for at least a second. Let me, let me use it. <laughs> All right, that was cute. Okay, so th that was like synchronized uh, swan dance. <laughs> Numbers even went for a taunt there. <laughs> what is this, John? Is know, a lot of damage off of that forward air. Sinji, I see him. But yeah, John is playing. Uh... The thing is, when John is having fun, that's when he plays his best, in my opinion. When he's in a good mood. Like, he's so cheeky with how he's going about everything right now. Like... The way that he's trying to take stage, the way that he's pressuring Sinji, like how he's confirmed his kills, it's all very creative. Nothing very tried and true, it, but it's working, clearly. So there's no reason for him to stop having fun, but I think Sinji wants to have a bit more fun in his own right. He's trying to win here. Okay, yeah, John, gonna throw that splat bomb Go across the stage. There we go, we got that double jump going over the hydrant. What the? Oh, he did the thing where you fail to put down the hydrant, although oh, now, yeah, yeah. now it looks like Pac-Man like leapfrocks on the ground. Yeah, I was gonna hydrant. say, was he like, it, that was like an Animal Crossing uh, villager taunt, you know, <laughs> where he just pokes the ground with a stick. Very weird animation. It is, I, I still don't know why that game. Dude, so, this so. banjo goes ham. Yo, really, though? Like, I got scared when I saw that there was a new remix for the Animal Crossing theme, because it's actually one of my favorites of all time. Mm. And then, like, I hear this banjo, I'm like, oh, come on now. And then the banjo just goes in, and I'm like, all right, I'm ready for five more years at Smashville. <laughs> and numbers following suit with that splat roller intact. The thing is, he's a little low on ink, but I, I think as long as he has enough ink to throw out a splat bomb, which he currently does, he doesn't mind. Yeah, that's always the target goal, because he can always just charge it for a little bit and get it back. And the moment he gets stage control or a stock, He's free to get himself more rank. Yeah, and that's exactly what he was going for. He had exact he had the right amount of ink before he could go for that kill. Because that forward air required no ink whatsoever. That was her kicks. No, she got that from uh Crustacean Sean. Crusty Sean. There you that's go. That's his name. There it is. Yo He's the one that sells shoes, right? I'm pretty sure yes, that's the one that does it. Yeah. Okay, 146% on inkling. Gets the roll that uh, not that good of a mash out coming out from Sinji, surprisingly. What if he was trying to mix up? He might have been trying to mix it up in case numbers wanted to go for an aerial. There's also the chance that Sinji's still trying to figure out the best way to mash in this game because mash is a tiny bit different in Ultimate than how it was in Smash 4. Well, there's nothing different about the fire, the fire hydrant slamming you like that and ending the stock. Yikes. Or tilt catches the recovery off of that up B. 
Spot Bomb coming intact. Ember's getting back onto the stage. Safe and sound. See him narrowly avoiding that Hydra, but now Sinji trying to carry him off with the forward airs. If he would have gotten that kill at like 33%, would have been ridiculous. Oh yeah, that would have been huge. Oh, and the Galaxian ship combos, opting to go for the power pellet to just get back to the stage while also putting out an active hitbox for John. Got to threaten with something. Sinji's been doing a much better job of occupying the space that John wants to move in, which, mind you, is difficult against such a mobile character like England, but he's managing very well, just remaining incredibly swift with where he sets himself up. Okay, we got the key. Like, if this is what the new age of John Numbers versus Sinji is going to be, I'm looking very forward to it. Like, at no point during the, the previous set of Grand Finals or this Game 1 have I gotten the feeling that either of these guys wants to go for the timeout. Like, they're playing that aggro, but they're playing it smart. Playing it very carefully as John Numbers opting to save his jump yet again. I mean, that's like the name of the game. Oh, kills him with the Hydra off of the neutral air. Numbers just responds with the spawn and kill himself. That's the classic. We've been seeing that a lot today. Just people just spawning and immediately getting the kill. I mean, you gotta do something. You can't let someone get away with a lead like that. Oh, yeah. It's like, it was one thing when it was a two-stock game, and it was like, all right, he's got a stock lead, it's whatever. Mm. What are you supposed to do to someone that has a two-stock lead on you? That is a daunting task. Yeah. You can't even get close to something like that. You have to threaten right away. And both these players are at their final stocks of this uh, game number one in true finals. Goes for the grab, a little bit too quick. Numbers gets the punish afterwards. Now what Sinji likes to do is to play, plant down the uh, Hydrant and then go for the grab as the water pushes him forward to just kind of catch a lot of foes uh, off guard. But Numbers is, definitely knows that trick. Yeah, plus the timing on it's a little bit different. So as much as John knows what's up with that, Sinji also has to learn how to time that right again. Like, like we've said this numerous times throughout just this set alone and you know, throughout the evening, that like as these players learn what their characters can do, as the, the metas begin really for their characters, there's so many cool tricks that everyone's gonna be able to come up with, but it's still the first week. That roller staying that out is there. Still as funny as it was the first time I saw it. Like, I'm, I don't know if it's just the fact that it's still burying or the fact that Inkling is just giving it their all while they're moving absolutely nowhere. All right, here we go. 112% to 43. Give me John's opportunity to try to get this edge guard. He's not getting the opportunity for it, though. It's not happening just yet, although we've seen John hunt around with up air. Up air, for what it's worth, is able to uh, catch pretty well. But back throw from Sinji's threatening kill, it's not going to manage it just yet, but he's doing a great job of racking up this damage. Hydrant setting up. Where it's a bit of an odd one, but numbers remains evasive. Okay, trying to avoid the water. And you know, mostly I brought I, I made a big point about how both these guys are playing aggro and how they're doing such a good job of changing the game, but the last 30 seconds on the clock looks mighty familiar. Yeah, the thing is it's gonna be in Sinji's favor, so numbers has to make big moves here and now. Trying to get that roller. That shield is looking mighty small. Sinji's got to do something. Either stay mobile or yes, turn around. Sinji is playing Key Boy. That's exactly what he's got to do. I mean, I don't blame him, dude. Doesn't even need Keep that away. The thing is, John was playing hyper aggressive because he had to. So Sinji was able to capitalize on that, on the, uh, the uh, not cautious of the aggression because it was only 10 seconds. He just had to throw out an active hitbox somewhere. And Sinji finally closes it off with a solid back air. To move into game two with uh, Sinji on tournament point. I was saying this earlier, like, new champion from either of these guys. Sean was looking the favor coming into this grand as he reset grand finals with the 2-0 very quickly. However, he might be running out of steam. Like, we, we joke around about being Thursday boys, but it's already won. Like, yeah. These boys are boiling it down to, like, the last of their energy. And what follows may be the last game of the night. Either way, we're about to see it as we go into game two. Oh, what, what a set. What a jam uh, to end the night on, man. We're here at New York City, a.k.a. New Donk City, coming at you live from Pauline. 
Me personally, I, I would I would have liked Foresight better for for New York, but I like this song though. Yeah, for, no, Foresight is the new New York though. That's definitely new New York. Either way, we are here for it. Battlefield once again the pick for uh, numbers picking against this. Yes. Yep. Hope you like this song for seven minutes. Let's go. Uh, you know, I liked it when it came out. I still like this song. This song is a this song's a jam. It's cute, but it, it, I feel like it's a little. Oh, Numbers is going way too hard with that roller. They're not sure where he was trying to go with that. He's got the bell in his hand. Now, if John Show chooses, he can hold on to that projectile, and it prevents Sinji from being able to pull out one of his own. But instead, he just landed the bell right on him, got some free damage off of that F-Smash. I, I always used to like bring up the, the fact that item play and knowing the counterplay of characters who spawn items is super important. And especially against Sinji, someone who's so... Like, well attuned to using all these different bonus fruits and all their wacky ways and getting so much off of it. I feel like that still stands true here in Ultimate, especially with some uh, other new characters who spawn items. But something's never changed. People just don't learn to hold on to that item and keep it away from Sinji. Ooh, just throws a splat bomber right at him against that Hydrant. Back here, great tech coming out from Sinji to get back onto the stage safe and sound. Trying to trade that, but Ooh, that, that was, was cute. A Great bait coming out from uh, Numbers. You saw him throw the bell to keep Sinji distracted by it, so he didn't even think about John just charging it and connecting that grab. He's got the bell. Throwing down the hydrant. And the hitbox from the Yuppie actually managing to do its job for once. Oh, how about doing that job? There you go. All right, well, these stocks traded itself much more uh, quickly than anticipated. He's doing that forward tilt. I'm surprised with how much mileage uh, John has gotten out of that forward tilt. Like, it seems like such a safe spacing tool. I mean, it's great. Like you said, she just goes for that pistol whip, packs on a lot of damage afterwards. Now we got Pac-Man again playing with the bonus fruit yet again. Ooh! I just ended far and Numbers went so deep for that. My god. He saw his opportunity and he took it. Numbers running away with a combo. And now. We're looking on point to get us over into game three. The yeah. truest of true fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got that parry as well. Look out for that bell. You know, I could have sworn uh, Sinji had a... Uh... He grabbed him through the hydrants. Hello? Man. We got to spend the next few years getting used to the wild things what? that Sinji can do. The ever-loving crap. I guess. All right. Either way, like, Sinji's doing a good job of putting on the damage, but now it seems like he's struggling a bit to get the kill. And I feel like that's just because of a lot of the pressure that Numbers is forcing out. Like, Sinji doesn't have as much time to get out the bell or as much time to... Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. All right. Trying to go for that uh, rapid jab. Hang on to that platform, like, ledge for dear life. <laughs> I mean, Numbers doesn't have to approach. He's got the stock lead. Like, he doesn't need to play the game. Okay, trying to go for that super jump. Still just chipping away at it, but Sinji has not managed out the, the kill yet. Ooh. Down smash. All right, a bit of a gruesome one, but it finally nets the kill for Sinji. However, he ended up taking 57% of the process, so. It's a bit grim, but still very doable for Sinji to try and end out the night here. Oh, there goes the Galaxian shit, my man. Okay, Sinji is one stock away. Taking this away Off from numbers, and we're having a Pac-Man win Xeno, the first Xeno Ultimate Tournament in New York City. What in the world? I honestly feel like it'd be very fitting for uh, for Inkling to manage it out. Oh, he challenged him. Not have to get the death yet. Sinji going great DI. Numbers go super deep to end the pack jump and steal that last stock away from Sinji. The final game of the night coming at you live.
I wouldn't really call that deep when like you can't do anything about it, and you're just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, he just go. ran <laughs> down there. He <laughs> just he's, he's just like, he's like, it's like, okay, here we go. He's like, oh, there we go. I hit him, and uh, uh, I'm gonna one, step on the thing. Two, while uh, so, you're while so deep, Lamau. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. All right, the truest of the truest true finals truly beginning on. Smash Thank stuff. God, because it's almost 1:30. Like I, oof. I have to, I have to ride the but low double R. Have fun, dog. To, then I have to drive. Ooh. I drove to the lure. You know who else is driving this Galaxian ship currently? I wish I had a Galaxian ship. That thing must have great mileage. <laughs> it's an eight yeah. bit. Oh yeah. I, no, it's probably. Where probably, do I put the gas? Nah, it's killing the Earth, bro. I guess. All right, here we go. See him throwing just constant barrage of bombs. And I guess he gets his charge back for free because since he's just kind of chilling backwards. Just do the key at him, not letting him respect. You know, of all games for these guys to figure out how to play campy with their characters, I pray it's not this one. Not this point in the night, please. There yeah, we go. Yeah, it's the connection off of the bell. With almost no damage done to Sinji either. That was practically a free stock. Okay, was hoping, trying to apply some shield pressure, Sinji just goes for the uh, spawning of the Hydrant as an answer. I think now that John figured out how useful Splat Bomb is in this matchup, we're not going to see an end to the Onslaught. And unfortunately, I think Sinji needs to figure out the counterplay quickly or else Splat Bombs are just going to completely terrorize every time he builds up his Mobile Bastion. I've been trying to get the follow-up, just waits for him. It's hard to be at that air dodge. You only get one air dodge per, like, while you're in the air and until you get hit, obviously, or you touch the home base. Get your feet on the ground. I'm just gotta figure out something. This is getting to be a pretty brutal lead that uh, since she's building up. Already lapped in percentage with the stock lead that he has. And you know, honestly, one thing, I, I brought this up the first time I saw it, but I'm really waiting to see if it has any applications. When you shield the, the hydrant and the water flies upwards, Hysterical. Oh, yeah, yeah. If it actually sends a little bit upwards, though, I'll be very intrigued to see what happens with that in the future. There we go. Forward air. Remember's trying to follow up. Goes for the back throw. Still not killing it, though. That was a great angle on the splat bomb. Like, cooked just long enough. Again, trying to throw out these splat bombs. Sinji's still sitting at that 135%. Not enough for numbers just cannot find his way to solidify this kill. I mean, his usual kill, his go-to kill move is to burrow his opponent with the splat roller. Just goes up for a forward air instead, gets the tech on the wall so he doesn't take the trade of death as well. So he's still holding on to two stocks. Yeah, but one of those stocks is in really bad shape right now. Sinji's done a great job of slowing the pace of the match down and just chipping the damage little by little onto numbers. Oh, try it again with the up smash. Inky coming out. <laughs> okay, gets the pack jump. See him throw that splat bomb, narrowly avoiding Sinji. Omni is trying to apply up some pressure with that forward air. Look out for that melon. Melon's a pretty slow uh, projectile. I hope John has the speed and, uh, I guess, attentiveness to dodge it. You know, for what it's worth, actually, John is making a lot of these stocks last long. So if he's going to be taking this, uh, damage, he kind of needs to. Like, he's sitting at 154 and growing, and his first stock is a lot like this as well. They're trying to get back on the stage. Goes for the trade. The neutral air added the shield. Still sitting at 172%. Just Ooh, throws the that. key. That was actually a really smart one as well because we saw the key bring down a good amount of the shield and then the fire hydrant poked it. Like, shield poking is a lot better of a, uh, of a method of pressuring your opponent overall just because, I mentioned this earlier, shields are pretty weak right now. Like, literally, as in they take a little bit less damage than what we're all used to, but also... Your out of shield options aren't as uh, potent. Shield grabbing is notably slow. Like, 
it's not a fun time to play in shield defensively speaking. Yeah, he just throws the hydrant right back at him with that forward smash. And that's actually like a good uh, tool for Sinji to go for as well. Just go for the pack jump on top of the hydrant. Just instead of flying. Number saw an opening, ran in there with that forward air. Trying to get something going. That was a good use of the pack jump. Instead of waiting that time around, just using it immediately to mix him up. He is going for the Yo, ultimate dude. with that Galaxian combo. He wanted it so badly. No pun intended. Oh, point blank splab. I'm not going to give him too much. He's sitting at way too high a percent. I don't know if Jundras can do this. If he manages to, it will be a beautiful sight to see. However, it's going to be a very difficult one as we clock into the last minute and a half of the smash. And this is the last one. Look at the deficit that John is sitting on right now. Not enough to get that kill with that Hydrant just yet. 135%. At this point, Sinji could play the runaway game. He, he just go for a timeout. Back there will not get the kill just yet. And there's no reason for Sinji to stay grounded either for numbers to try to get that kill confirm off of Roller. We might see Inkling's weakness come into fruition. Takes a wow. trade. No one died. Right. What are they saying? I really cannot understand what they're saying. But they're really hype about something. Yeah, and it's less than a minute left. This is uh, looking pretty bleak for numbers. I, I, I don't know what he's gonna do. He's not gonna be able to do anything. He's Sinji... just gonna get tossed away, and Sinji is going to be the first champion for Ultimate here yeah. at Zeno. With Pac-Man, my, my gosh, New there York he goes. New York City. We got some work to do. But here we go. <laughs> we learned nothing. No, but congratulations to Sinji. From Deadly Alliance, taking home first place, finish at the first ultimate tournament for Xeno. Xeno 139. That's going to be it. Do we want to do interviews, Devin, or do we want to get uh, out of here? We should do it. It's the we first should, one. It is the we first one. It. We should do yeah. it. I